rich parents kick pregnant daughter out. What happened years later was shocking. The Jacksons kicked their daughter, Lara, out of the house one winter day when she announced that she was pregnant with her boyfriend's child. However, years later, their paths crossed again when Mr. Watson approached Lara for help. Lara met Fred while walking down her high school corridor with a stack of books. She tripped over something and was about to fall when Fred rushed to her aid and saved her. Lara thanked the man for his kindness before shyly gathering her books and departing. Since that day, it seemed as if an unknown force was at work, causing them to cross paths every day. Soon after, these unexpected encounters blossomed into love, and they promised to be a part of each other's lives until death. Lara never told her parents about Fred for a long time, fearing they would never accept him. But when she became pregnant, the ridge of her baby soon appeared, and it was no longer possible to hide it. As a result, she mustered courage and told them that she wanted to raise the child, but her parents weren't impressed with her thoughts. Pregnant? Tell me it's not true, Lara. Mrs. Watson yelled at her daughter. You can't have a child with that poor creep. Oh, enough, Mom, Lara retorted. I'm 18. I'm not a child anymore. Fred and I love each other, and yes, this is our baby. Then you'll have to abort it, Lara, her father declared. The child will not have our name. It's a disgrace for my daughter to be pregnant before marriage and with a man who's just a janitor. I don't care, Dad, Lara said. Fred's a nice man. He agreed to take responsibility for our child, and I want to have this child, too. I'm not terminating the pregnancy. Have you lost your mind, Lara? Are you really choosing that man over us? Her mother shouted angrily. It's not me, Mom. It's you guys. I agree. Fred doesn't come from wealth, but I love him, Mom. Why can't you guys just accept him? No way, Lara. Nobody in our family has ever married someone from a lower social class, and you will not either. The hell out of here if you want to raise that man's blood. You're no longer alive to us as of today. Poor Lara had tears in her eyes when her father ordered her to leave. She looked at her mother with pitiful eyes, thinking that being a mother, she'd understand her plight, but it was all in vain. Her mother was as against her pregnancy as her father, and they didn't hesitate to throw their pregnant daughter out of the house in the bitter cold. Lara was wearing a thin nightgown and slippers as she walked out of her parents' home and headed over to Fred's. It was snowing outside, and she was trembling and shivering in the cold, clutching her baby bump. She somehow made it to Fred's house that evening, but even before she could ring the doorbell, her vision dimmed and she fell into a deep sleep. Luckily, that evening, Fred had decided to go to a nearby store. When he stepped out of the house and saw her lying unconscious, he immediately dialed 911 and took her to the hospital. The woman, on waking up, realized the worst had already happened. She had lost their child. Fred, she sobbed as she clutched her hand. Our child, I lost our baby, Fred. She couldn't stop crying. Everything will be fine, Lara. He hugged her and consoled her, hiding the tears in his eyes. I'm here with you. But nothing could console her at the time, and for several days she continued to blame herself for her child's death. Fred temporarily forgot about everything and focused all his attention on Lara. Thankfully, with his assistance, she gradually emerged from her depression and resolved to start afresh. Lara and Fred moved in together after she was discharged from the hospital, and they both began looking for stable employment. Fred was fortunate enough to find one at a car rental service, and Lara decided to finish her studies first, working part-time jobs at the same time to supplement her income. A few years later, she graduated with a law degree and started interning at a reputable firm. When the internship ended, the firm, impressed by her performance, hired her as a full-time employee, and then Lara and Fred decided to take out a mortgage for the apartment. Soon, Lara found out she was expecting a baby, and the couple was over the moon, to say the least. Lara's parents never reached out to her all these years, not even when Lara sent them a letter once, telling them that she'd forgiven them and wanted to see them. Nine months later, when she gave birth to a beautiful girl, she took a break from work to spend time with her baby. Meanwhile, Fred had started his own car rental business, which was doing quite well. He'd made the decision that he would never let his daughter miss out on anything, and he was doing everything he could to make that happen. When little Julia turned one, Lara opened a small consultation service at her home and started taking a few classes before returning to a full-time job. One day, she received a request to handle a criminal case, and the client asked her to meet her at a restaurant. Lara froze in shock when she arrived at the restaurant and saw her father sitting at the table. The once arrogant man now looked extremely frail, and it took Lara a moment to realize that the man behind the wrinkly face and sunken cheeks was indeed her father. Do you think I wouldn't come to see you if you mentioned your name in the mail? She asked as she approached him. 
Well, if that's the case, let me tell you, I would have because I'm not like you guys. Her father looked at her with tears in his eyes. Sorry, Lara. Please forgive us for what we did. We need your help. Yeah, go ahead. I know that's the only reason you remember me after all these years. So would you guys mess up this time? Oh, Lara, we miss you, but we were so embarrassed that we never dared to confront you. But that's not the point. Your mother needs help. We've been running around the court for two years and all our money was drained in the process. We now live in a small apartment, all thanks to your mother. Because of her, three people lost their lives. She was drinking and driving, and the best we could do to save her was to get a certificate that she was sober behind the wheel. I see, Lara sighed. You have to help us, Lara, but we won't be able to pay your fees. I am so sorry for all this. It's okay, Dad, Lara said. I never asked you for money. Let me see what I can do. Lara paid for their bill, collected the documents about her mother's case from her father, and left. At home at night, she went through the case file and realized that an agreement between the two parties was the only way to save her money. So she went to the victim's families, convinced them that her mother had already lost everything and had been punished for her deeds. In the courtroom, a week later, the victim's family agreed to monetary compensation, and Lara's mother was freed from the charges. The woman couldn't stop crying and was about to thank her daughter for stepping up when Lara left the courtroom. Mrs. Watson rushed out of the courtroom behind her daughter and saw her with Fred and a child. What's your name, honey? She asked the little girl, realizing that the child resembled her daughter and was her granddaughter. I'm Julia, the girl smiled. You have a lovely name, Julia. Would you like to come and see me someday? Mrs. Watson inquired. Perhaps later, Lara interjected. We have plans for the evening. Yes, that's fine, Mrs. Watson exclaimed. But I must say, Lara, she bears a striking resemblance to you. You have a lovely daughter. Well, she resembles her father more, Lara said firmly. Remember the poor man who wasn't up to your standards? Anyway, we'll leave now. Goodbye. Lara knew that if her parents had not kicked her out onto the street, Julia would have had another sister or another brother. But if Julia wants to see her grandparents, she won't forbid her. However, the woman was not ready to forgive them. She was still in a lot of pain in her chest from losing her first child and her parents abandoning her, only to return when they needed help. Act before it's too late. Lara's first child would be alive today if her parents hadn't abandoned her on the streets when she needed help. True love exists. Fred's love for Lara is evident in how he cared for her, and he never left her side. The situation was too hard. A father's been branded as controlling and heartless after he kicked his pregnant daughter out of the house for lying about getting back together with her ex-boyfriend. The man, believed to be from the U.S., took to Reddit thread Am I the A-Hole, where he asked Redditors to tell him if he's in the wrong for giving his daughter an ultimatum, choose to keep her baby and not live in the house, or give her up for adoption. He described the boyfriend as a scumbag and told his daughter that she needed to leave him or leave her father's house. In the post, he wrote, my daughter recently told me and my wife that she's pregnant, and apparently she's been hiding it from me for three months. The boyfriend is a scumbag who I thought she left after I gave her an ultimatum to either leave him or leave my house, to which she chose the latter, or at least I thought she did. She started sobbing and telling us how sorry she was and that it was just a big mistake. I told her the only way she can stay in our house is if she gives the baby up for adoption because we won't allow it to ruin her life. She just kept pleading to us that she'll take care of it, but I had a very hard time believing her after I just found out she's been lying to me for months and going behind my back to see her boyfriend. My daughter refused to give her baby up, to which is when I decided to kick her out of my house, and now she's staying with a friend for I don't know how long. My wife has been incredibly sad and is now telling me that what I did was wrong. It wasn't an easy decision for me to make, but I couldn't allow her to walk away without any consequences. At her age, I was already taking care of myself, so I don't look at it the same way others might. Is it really wrong for me to kick my adult daughter out of my house after she lied to me? I'm willing to see if I've taken things too far. Most users in the comments argued that he was wrong to do this to his daughter. And how is kicking her out when she is pregnant, vulnerable, and in need of stability and love going to help? Yeah, not great parenting, I would say. Another agreed, saying, It's funny because he says he doesn't want her to have the baby because he won't ruin her life, except he just did that by throwing her out.